welcome to Janet's Planet, where we are traveling at the speed of thought, and I sure hope that you have had a ton of fun learning about careers that you may someday do in space, all of the Apollo missions, learning that you, yes, you are the Artemis generation, but now it is time to build and engineer our future on the moon and someday on Mars. So. I'm going to take off my very pretend astronaut coat here, and this means business. We're going to get down and we are going to start to work. So what is our goal for today? We are going to design and build, wait for it, your very own lunar lander. Now, time now for a little history lesson. During the Apollo mission, this vehicle, the Lunar Module, will take two men and their scientific instruments to the surface of the moon. While there, it will serve as command post and communication center. And when the astronauts finish their exploration, it will take them back to the orbiting command module for the return trip to Earth. The Lunar Module is actually two spacecraft in one. The lower half, the descent stage, functions to lower the vehicle to a soft landing on the lunar surface, and then later operates as a launching platform for leaving the moon. The upper half, the ascent stage, contains the crew compartment and flight controls. After the lunar exploration period, it is separated from the descent stage and carries the astronauts to rendezvous with the command module. This docking hatch connects the lunar module to the command module. After mating, the hatch provides crew access between the two. The small window nearby serves only one purpose, visibility during those critical moments of docking with the command module after the lunar module returns from the moon. And the lunar module is well equipped for its part of the job. In all, there are 13 antennas for the various modes of reception and transmission. This parabolic antenna is the rendezvous radar used when the lunar module leaves the moon to dock with the orbiting command module. Propulsion, too, occupies prime attention on the lunar module. To jockey the spacecraft into position as it nears the surface of the moon, there are four clusters of rocket engines. Each cluster contains four engines used for controlling the attitude of the spacecraft. They enable the pilot to maneuver the vehicle up, down, forward, backward, or sideways. In the lower portion of the module is the rocket engine, which provides the propulsion for the descent to the moon's surface. The thrust is controllable and varies from one to more than 10,000 pounds. Located near the skirt of this descent engine is the landing radar unit. During the soft landing, this unit supplies critical information on altitude, range, and speed. The main hatch in the lower forward section of the ascent stage is the one through which the astronauts leave the lunar module to explore the lunar surface. Most of the interior space of the lunar module is taken up with instruments, dials, and gauges. The lunar module, crammed with instrumentation, communications equipment, and propulsion, all needed for the important job of jetting two men down to and away from the surface of the moon. Remember that Starship, Elon Musk company, looks like it has the uh, contract for NASA to land on the moon. But it's so stinking tall!
importance of landing humans back on the moon is we're going back in a way that is totally different. We've had almost 60 years of experience and we're taking every single ounce of experience we have and taking that with our international partners, with our commercial partners. We've been working for the last year with three partners who will help us achieve the next human mission to the moon. Because we know that this first step to the moon will then lead us to go to Mars. And we know that the human landing system is one of the first steps to get us there. And so we've been working with Dynetics, a Lido's company. We've been working with Blue Origin, who have partners of Draper, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman. In addition, we've also been working with SpaceX. This is a very, very exciting time for the Human Landing System Program. They've spent a lot of blood, sweat, and tears over this last couple years getting ready for this moment. We're really excited to bring you the announcement of who NASA is going to continue to finish out the human landing system and take humans back to the moon. NASA has chosen SpaceX to return us to the moon. I am so excited to partner with SpaceX in this fantastic endeavor for the Artemis suite of missions. So congratulations to the SpaceX team. The SpaceX design is a single stage solution using their Starship. It provides extensive volume for the crew with two airlocks and ample down mass capability. The SpaceX proposal included in space propellant transfer demonstration and uncrewed test landing. So now that we've selected our partner, and for the next phase going forward, we have to make sure that the testing occurs because we're not going to launch humans until we have a successful test. So we will be working to make sure that uh, the design and everything that we have going forward so far is ready to go. So the human landing system is going to allow us to be able to access different parts of the lunar surface but it also allows us to explore a new technology and capabilities that will help us when we are trying to figure out our next round of technologies to be able to help us land on Mars or our other planets out there. I'd like to thank the companies uh, for the great work this, this past year. Uh, we've all learned a lot. I'd like to thank the NASA team because you have definitely risen to this challenge. It is one more step and an exciting group of steps that will get us to a sustainable human landing system to the moon. Now, as a recap, let me show you some pictures. I rather favor this Lockheed Martin version or this one by Dynetics. I like it because when the solar panels are up, it looks like a bunny rabbit. I also really love this design. I mean, we're talking low to the ground, great center of gravity, lots of places for air resistance and friction, because what do we know about the moon? It has Zero. I'm talking nada. Not an atmosphere at all. Meaning that when you're coming in hot, you're going to have to have maybe retro propulsion and something to create some air resistance and friction as you land. Now, I show you all of these pictures to get your gears going. <laughs>
recommend. Do you have some paper plates? These are great little kind of like bathroom cups that make for a great capsule. I've got tons of straws. I even have index cards. You can do the large ones or the small ones. It really is up to you. You're going to need some cotton balls because these are going to represent your astronauts. Now, I personally like to take a marker and uh, I'm not a great artist, but it's fun and give them a little eyeball and maybe even draw a little space helmet. It's kind of hard on cotton, but again, it's faint. But again, now you can even name your astronaut. Hmm. I think I will name this Astro Katie right here. And so she's going to be my launch partner when I land on the moon. But you're going to need these for your pretend astronauts. Now, if you're thinking, Janet, hold up. I don't have all this stuff. What do you have? Go raid the recycling bin. Hold on, let me see here. <gasps> Whoa, look what I found. Some aluminum foil. Hmm, that could come in handy. I don't know. What else do you have down here? Oh, look at here. This was in recycling. So, doesn't matter to me. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it with just these simple materials, paper plates, little cups, some straws, some cotton balls, and this. But you're going to get to take a picture and send it to me. And who but knows that your lunar lander is going to be even cooler than anything that I could make out of these simple materials. It really is your design. I'm even looking down here. Maybe if you don't have cotton balls, you could use erasers and those could be your astronauts. Or maybe, hold on, let's see what else we got down here. <gasps> How about a few pieces of Legos? You get to use what you have. Now, I do hope that you have found and made sure you have tape. Now, maybe you've got scotch tape. You might have some masking tape. And oh, if you're super lucky, you got duct tape. This stuff, hmm, this is good stuff. But really all you need, and if you're going, I don't have any tape like that, don't use all of them, but you can use Band-Aids if you can't find tape. Or use your imagination. Do you have some glue? Ooh, it'll take longer to dry. So again, I'm going to give you lots of options, but let's call it all down and say, for example, we're going to start here with these items that I have in front of me. Now, let me give you a few parameters. The only thing that really is a rule is going to be this. Remember when I was saying you could draw your face on your astronauts? You're going to put two astronauts in there because even when we go back as the Artemis generation and a crew of four in that Orion capsule, two will stay on the gateway, monitor things, and then two will go down to the lunar surface, do a bit of research, and then blast off, reconnect with gateway until they're ready to come back home. So you put your two astronauts inside this cup. Now, as we begin to build, my favorite model right there might be the Altair. Kind of looks like two cakes on top of one another, right? But here is where your astronauts are going to go. Hmm, why would I put the astronauts on top? What might happen if I put them on the bottom? Yes! Oh, that will not be fun! 
So our most precious resource is humans. So we're going to put them on the top. I mean, nobody wants to travel almost 245,000 miles only to arrive at the moon and go squat. Oh my aching back. Nobody wants to do that. So we're going to put our astronauts on top. Now, you might go, hmm, what could I do? And my favorite kind of straw to use is one of these flexible ones, right? So, okay, if you don't have them, you could probably get really creative of how you make one. You could make, oh, look, you could make a seat belt for your astronauts. <gasps> That's a, maybe an idea. The only thing is you got to have your astronauts on top in this capsule and listen up. Hmm, how might you... How might you as an engineer really hear this? Are you good and tuned in? What? Right. You guys are all listening. You're doing very great. You may not completely cover the cup. Hmm. She said not completely. Is she giving us wiggle room? You bet I am. All right. You may not completely cover the cup. Now, with these handy, and if you don't, you're like, I don't have index cards. Do you have paper, construction paper? Ooh, you could, that would even be better because it would probably be more colorful. All right, so imagine you could take and cut a little piece. Oh, what if you made a flap? I don't know. And you could probably make a cooler flap. Or what if you were to cut a hole just uh, or cut two sides there? Oh, you could make them a door to go out. Again, I don't know what you're going to do. You're the engineers here. I'm just here to kind of introduce this concept. All right. So next, and again, you're going to have to tape this down. I mean, imagine it's like, oh, I think I just wounded some astronauts. That's not good. We got to tape it down. So we're going to tape down this part to the top. Then we might tape around this. I mean, when you like before we do all of that, it kind of looks like a weird kind of flying saucer. <gasps> what if, remember me talking to you about air resistance and friction? What will slow our descent? Do you see those little mechanisms that are underneath the lander? Well, that's what they use for something we call retro propulsion, meaning that as they're coming in hot, maybe they're going too fast, they can fire these up and it will raise them up and then they can really lower themselves very softly to the surface of the moon. So imagine I could do three or four. You're going to want to be careful in how you position these on the bottom, but not only would that in theory, provide you with some re some opportunities for retro propulsion if you needed it. Now, hopefully, with the retro propulsion, your mechanisms for air resistance and friction, you'd have no problem landing softly and safely. We also want to think about shock absorption. And what's our greatest resource on any mission? It's humans. So we know we have them on top. You can even do something. Some of you may like origami. You can take an index card like this and fold it in what I like to call accordion fashion. So you go to the front and then you go the same amount of paper back and then you go to the front and the same amount of paper back and you keep doing it much like, what did I call it? An accordion. And then look, what you can do then, oh, look at there. It's like you've created your own little bit of shock absorption and you can also put it underneath here. So maybe you're going, you know what? I don't really want to do the retro propulsion. I want to do shock absorbers. Now, if you're going, but Janet, I've got extra cotton balls. Could they be my shock absorption material? It is your lunar lander. It can look however you want it to look. Let's start our build. Now, we've talked about you must put your astronauts on top. You can, you know, decorate their faces. You can put things inside here to think about air resistance and friction. You can use straws to be the lunar limbs, and you get to decide how you want to put those on there. One of the other things you might consider, what if I poked a few holes here, or I taped a straw there, or I taped a straw here? <gasps> 
could make a paper plate parachute. I don't know how you're gonna design. Now, that's a possibility. If you decide to put the plates together like this, and I'll tell you why you wanna do this, because like this, if we don't put anything underneath here, it's not heavy enough to really, really descend in a fashion like we're going to want it to. Now, if you decide, remember me talking about those lunar limbs. Let me show you again. You see those gold-plated limbs there, the foot pads that go around and kind of are stabilizing the lunar lander? Think of those as little feet for your lunar lander. Maybe before you tape everything down, you measure and you put your straws in there. Now, if you do have the flexible kind, I'm gonna encourage you to tape, put tape around this. It will fortify it so it won't bend so easily. So you might do that and you're like, oh, that might work really well. Or let me give you a few more ideas. What if you took a few of these index cards and before you taped the two plates together, Oh, wow. All right. You might decide to do two. Ooh, again, what we're creating is air resistance and friction so that it's like it's going to slow it down so that our astronauts arrive safely. You could do one, two, three, or four. You could even get fancy. And look, what if you fold it over, make a nice little 45 degree angle there, just fold it over to the side there, and then you poke that square part inside. <gasps> Ooh, now it looks like you even have a wing of some sort coming out of your lunar lander. So the design is really yours. Part of my process is to get you started thinking about how you might build it. Now, some of you out there are going, but Janet, Elon Musk has that super tall one. I'm like, all right, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Now, I saw the most marvelous build this past week, and a kiddo did this. So to make it tall, he stacked cups on top of each other, like so. He taped them all, of course, and then did this. And I mean, it was super tall. And I was like, now, wait a minute. I mean, we can already tell that it's like, as soon as that falls, it's gonna fall over, right? There's no way for that to like not fall over. And I was like, well, how are you gonna keep it from falling? And he was like, I'll be back. <gasps> he did something marvelous. But imagine if you used a plate for all of those cups to sit down inside. Now, any materials that you have, make sure you've asked your grown-ups that they are okay to play with and make with and build with, and then get started. Now that I have given you permission to start your build, let me review with you the engineering design process. In fact, if you wanna take a listen to this NASA engineer talk about what happens when problems arise or things don't go as planned, this is exactly what real engineers do. Now we've adopted from the Boston Museum of Science their engineering design plan as our model. The model is simple and intuitive. It involves six steps to students ask questions, they imagine possible solutions, they plan out a design, they create and construct a working model, then they experiment and test that model, and lastly, they revise and try to improve that model. Now, perhaps the best way to understand this is to actually do it. You've probably heard the word engineering before, and you've probably been told it's pretty important. But what exactly is engineering? And who exactly is an engineer? Engineers are people who design and build things that we use every day. However, they don't just go building the first thing that comes to mind. They work hard to make something we need, and they want to do a good job of it. So how do engineers decide what they need to build? Well, in most cases, they start with a question. Here's an example. Say you live on a space station and something outside breaks. 
Obviously, you need to go outside and fix it, but how exactly do you do that? That's a great question for engineers. Once they've got a good handle on things, they'll start imagining ways to solve the problem. They'll come up with all kinds of ideas, and some that might even seem a little crazy. That's important because sometimes the craziest idea is the one that works best. After coming up with these ideas, they'll pick a few that make the most sense. Next, they'll start drawing a plan. Depending on the idea, the plan can be very simple or very complicated. But the important part is the plan itself. A good plan helps engineers focus on what they're making and most importantly, why. Now the engineers get to have some real fun. They get to create something. It's important to stick to the plan though so the idea doesn't go too far off course. Once they've built it, then they have to test it. Experimentation is very important because it's here that engineers learn what works and, well, what doesn't. And while it's great when something goes right on the first try, it's actually good when things don't because that gives engineers a chance to go back and improve on their original idea. And improve they will until they've solved the problem. So the next time you've got a problem to solve, whether simple or complicated, there's probably a team of engineers ready to create something to solve it. And nobody solves engineering problems quite like NASA. Again, if you just constrain yourself that you're gonna use a couple of paper plates, I personally like these stacked on top. But the other first thing that I'm gonna recommend that you do, remember two astronauts are gonna go down to the surface. We're going to put them on top and not the bottom. Now, let me show you a good way to adhere this to the top of your paper plate or piece of cardboard or whatever you might be working with. I like to go ahead and put the tape in place and it just becomes much easier. And I've been tearing tape for a while, but in a minute I'll show you the best way I know how to tape. So you, you know, it's hanging down like little spider legs. Then I bend them out and look, I just, I may even move those bottom ones, and I'm looking for the very center. If you've got a ruler, you can make that, but again, that looks pretty centered to me. You wipe that down. Look how easy that was, right? Much easier than trying to hold it and put it there. Now, if you are not any good at tearing tape, here's my trick. You pull it out. And then you put your thumb, not over that little razor, a sharp edge there, but you put your thumb right there and then you just kind of rip. Makes it super easy and you don't waste the tape. If you're like me, occasionally I have been accused of wasting tape. Now, the next thing that I am going to do is I think that I want to make those lunar limbs out of straws. Now, I'm gonna find four that I like. You can use the same color or you can mix it up. Maybe you wanna have a little design creativity level there. Why not a pink one? Ooh, do I have another one over there? Oh yeah, all right. So that'll just be my very unique, like one little thing like going, why did she put that there? Because I like being creative. Now. You see how they're all wanting to bend. So you're gonna to have to start out and just put the one there. I like to do this and then you can kind of twist it around, twist it around so that you can have the center there. All right. Now, the other thing that I told you about is, you see how bendy that is? If you place some tape around this bent part, it's going to fortify it so that when you drop it, and we are going to do a drop test, it won't bend so easily. So then think about if you were dividing this plate up into four equal parts of pizza and figure out the dimensions of that. It's almost like you'll put one straw at 12 o'clock, one straw at three o'clock, and again, you're wanting to put tape around that bendy section. Nobody wants that falling apart or bending or failing on you once you do your drop test. So 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock down here. Now this may be, I guess, if depending on how you're looking at it, that could technically be nine o'clock. 
for all of those out there who tend to see the world in a different way. <laughs> You'll understand that why sometimes my brain sees some things in a different kind of pattern. And again, all I'm going to do, now if you're going, Jana, this is going very slowly. Hey, engineering takes time, my friends. So now let's put this one in the, now you see, I might even do this. Do you see that I'm creating my own kind of engineering security blanket there by placing that one underneath it in the three o'clock or nine o'clock position, depending on how you're looking at things here. And... Again, you're going, Janet, that kind of moved. Yeah, well, that's what happened. So all you have to do is like, it may not be perfect the first time that you tape it down. What do you do? You tape it again, or you undo it, and then you redo your action. Again, remembering those principles of design and then redesign when things don't work out like maybe you thought they might. So far, so good. Now I'm going to attach this top plate pretty good. You know what I'm seeing now? Now I'm going, wait a minute, this is a little off center. I got to redesign. I got to get that right there in the center. So I'll just take that, those flaps of tape, move it ever slightly because it's like, it's going to work the best if truly my center of gravity is right. And I've got this. Hmm. Do I want to stick anything else in between there? I do sort of love that idea of some air resistance and friction. So, and I particularly like folding it like it's a bit of a wing, but we are talking about the moon. Maybe I'll just go and like use the whole thing. Ha ha, I like that better. Now, I'm just gonna leave a little bit of that sticking out on that side, a little bit sticking out. And you kinda wanna do whatever side that you went on, doing it on the exact opposite side and that'll give you balance. And that's another key thing is we build things, whether it's a building or a spacecraft, we wanna think about balancing things out. Now, as we come around here, again, I'm just closing down the plate. You know what I've also seen really innovative students do, like couches and a TV and a monitor and mission control. This is your design. Feel free to do it however you want. Now, I'm going to come around this part and I'm probably going to use a fair amount of tape. I'm going to tape around where I have what I'm calling my lunar limbs, right? And then I'm going to keep on coming around. You do not, and I repeat, I will repeat this the whole time that we're together, is that you do not have to build it like I am. I am merely showing you one design and then encouraging you to take off in any good direction that you will. Now, if I'm going to stick this here, I want to make sure, oh, see, I didn't get that tape down very well. So I need to go back. Again, that's all part of it is that you continually go back and check your work. I'm pretty sure that's not the first time you've heard that. Go back and check your work. All right, now that's not going anywhere. All right, so... I want to make sure that I've got about the same amount of paper and the same side and angle that I need it there. Now, you see that piece of tape has absolutely, is not helping at all. I didn't get it on there very straight. I don't know about you, but uh, sometimes, not always, but sometimes I can really, really rush my work. It's not a bad thing. We just like are on to something and we want to get to the next thing and the next thing. Sometimes when we take our time though, we'll discover some things that we might have missed by going fast. Now, it is kind of standing up. Let's see. Let's just imagine if I dropped it. Ooh. Oh, man, those legs bent. Hmm. What could I do now to make sure those stand up? Let me see. Try again. Nobody wants to arrive to the moon only to have their uh, spacecraft. Although, look, that's a kind of a nice design. It sort of grabs on. So have I discovered something else that works better? Maybe I don't need them to be... Ooh. What if I add foot pads? Then I'll just cut all the way around like this. <laughs> now, I'm not even sure I'm going to do this now because I super love, I'm gonna bend that down, so maybe that's a little smoother. <gasps> I could, 
put it right there and it might land better. Well, might as well try it since it came to my mind. If I don't like it, you know what I can do? I can take it off because that's the only way that we learn. So if at first, when you do a few of these like test drops and it doesn't work out, redesign, improve, modify, and test again. And so failure is a way that we go, oh, well, if that didn't work, maybe there's another way. I'm already also saying that maybe I don't have enough tape around these lunar limbs to really be effective. So maybe I'll go back and fortify that as well. Now, I am pretty sure that you guys are already doing some great designs and I cannot wait to see them. Teachers, if you're out there listening, please be taking some pictures. Send it back to the theater. They will forward on to me and uh, with your permission, I will happily make you my stars of the day and put you on all of my Janet's Planet social media and go, NASA, take, pay attention and say, NASA, pay attention. Now, do you see what I did there? Like, I could totally not even show you this part and look like I get it right every time, but look at how much tape I have on there. Good grief, Janet. Well, at least if you ever got a birthday present or a holiday present from me, uh, it would take you a long time to open it because I do super duper love tape, but it wasn't working. So I had to undo it, which is aggravating, no doubt, right? We want it right the first time, who doesn't? But that's not always how it works when we're designing. So you see, I'm gonna put more tape here and around. All right, let's see here. See, I can already tell that's not working so well. Oh, goodness. Hmm. I'm going to rethink these feet. You guys might find a better way to do that. Oh, wait a minute. Did somebody out there say it might work better if I put a hole? I am getting to bear witness to your great genius. All right, let me try that out. I'm still not sure that I love this more than I love my kind of like weird, you know, just, hey, that's groovy, cool, it lays down, almost like, you know what that reminds me of? You know, the kickstand on a bicycle? It's like, whoop, my kickstand just went down. <laughs> I might like that better, but because you said put a hole in it, I'm gonna give it a try. Are you doing that? That's really great. Super genius, give yourself, kiss your brain. Yep, super good, I love it. it you know what, it's like, you gotta celebrate your own genius always. And let me tell you, kiddos, the world is in desperate need of your genius. Go ahead and lay it on us. Doesn't matter how young you are, you might come up and solve a problem for the entire world. Okay, so you said put a hole in it. Hmm. What do I have? I'm gonna use my smaller scissors. If you've got a pencil, sometimes that's a great way to do it. And instead of like, I never like it when somebody just poke a hole in it, because then it's like, you could poke a hole in your finger. So you know what I like to do? I just like to drill a hole. All right, so I drilled a little hole there. Now let's see if your genius idea is gonna work. Look at there, you little stinker. Of course it is. Look, that's gonna be so much better. I'm gonna get it where it's right there at the bottom and then I'm gonna tape it right there. All right, I see how you are, brilliant. Now I'm just gonna kind of test it out on this particular lunar limb. And if I love it, like I think I'm going to love it. All right, let's see here. Oh, I still got some work to do. So in the meantime, while I continue to work on my design and you continue to work on your design, take a look at the time I did this outside in the summertime with a bunch of kiddos. And instead of using cotton balls, you know what we used? Marshmallows. I learned my lesson that day because marshmallows melt, but you'll see some kids who succeeded in their test of how their lunar lander landed. Try saying that three times, how their lunar lander landed. And how many had to go back and redesign. Check it out. Welcome to Janet's Planet where we're traveling at the speed of thought and today we are here making lunar landers, testing our design process. You have to make the astronauts stay 
in the bucket, something to hold them in, and you have to have weight on the bottom so it'll go down. It was a little difficult. You have to build it the right way if you want to have an easy fix. I had to adjust holding the cup down to hold the astronauts. to do something different and work through my problems. It was very fun to see that I could do this. I'm ready to show this to astronauts. Let your mind revolve around this thought. It's all about creating, brainstorming, and testing your design. And that's the view from Janet's Planet. Go Janet's Planet! Now, I hope your designs are coming along very nicely. May I show you my first drop test? All right, can you count me down? Here we go. In five, four, three, two, one. Did you see that? All right. Thank you for the genius that told me to poke holes in my foot pads here. Brilliant idea. I also added my own flag. Maybe you can add your flag. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be. It could be the American flag. I made mine the Janet's Planet flag. Now, let's talk about the good. Oh, you know what? Mine wasn't a real test because I hadn't put my astronauts in. <gasps> All right. Where's my face? All right, there's your cute face. There we go. Now let's try this drop test. Yeah, I'm just going to stick them beside each other. Remember, I said you cannot completely cover it, so what if I just leave it open? We'll see what happens. Five, four, three, two, one, drop. Ooh, they moved around a little bit. Hmm, you know, maybe I make them a seat belt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, cars have it. Surely, and I know this to be true, I know spaceships have to have them. So I'm going to put a little seat belt over him. A little bendy seat belt over it. Whoops, that hadn't been so great. All right, I'm going to use this one. All right, little bendy seat belt there. Now remember, I said you cannot completely cover. Maybe, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I am going to make a little round cover for the top of the cup. Yeah. So again, you see that that's not completely covering the cup, but it might provide a tad bit of protection. All right. So then they can just pop open the hatch. Oh, do you know what I remember being on all those Apollo landers? A ladder. Oh, how could we make a ladder out of straws? Oh, I think I know. Let's see, how long do I want this ladder to be? Ooh, that almost looks like skis or like, that's very long. <laughs> All right, let's see here. I think I don't need it that long because even when uh, Neil Armstrong was taking that first ever step, he was like, they didn't know what it was gonna be like. He had kind of like, well, it seems kind of like a fine powder. And he was like, all right, okay, here I go. I'm coming off the limb. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Imagine doing something nobody else in the whole world had ever done. I mean, the whole universe. Nobody had ever walked on the moon or set foot on the moon. All right, so I think I'm going to make, I've got my flap that's going to open. I think I'll put my one part of my ladder here. Then I'll put my other side of the ladder here. Oh, that's not quite even. That's what you got to make sure of is that it's all the same length, right? All right, and they're all good stuff. Oh, but now I need the steps on it, don't I? Check that out. All right, so imagine, now I might have to use another straw here 
but I'll just cut enough pieces that go down like that. Do you want to make a ladder on yours? Awesome! All right, let's make this ladder. And what would you say? When we go back as the Artemis generation, I kind of have a thing that we won't be, maybe we'll go, that's one giant leap for the first female footprints. Remember, 12 guys have walked on the moon, but no girls, which seems entirely unfair. That's one small step or no, we've already said that. How about we would say, here's to the next great step by all humans, for all humans, for everybody, always. Ooh, <laughs> I wonder if I should write NASA and tell them that's exactly what that astronaut should say. And speaking of astronauts, that might be you. In the next 20 to 30 years, you're going to witness people go back to the moon to work and do research and then head on out to Mars. Mm -hmm. You guys are probably eight, nine, 10 in that range. Yeah, in 20 or 30 years, you'll be the perfect age to be those people going to the moon and on to Mars. 50 years ago, we went to the moon. We called it Apollo. What many people don't know is that Apollo had a twin. She was a woman named Artemis, goddess of the moon. We are returning to the moon. As a new generation of explorers. This time to stay. And to prepare to achieve humanity's next giant leap of sending the first human missions to Mars. We believe our course will redefine what is possible. That we will discover life-saving, earth-changing science and that the challenges ahead will inspire generations. This is our manifest. For all who wondered if we could return. For all who dreamed of pressing beyond. This is your calling. We go for all of America. We go. We go as the Artemis generation. We go. be talking to the very first astronauts they're gonna walk and put their footprints on Mars I'm just taking that in that's pretty special if that happens to be you will you maybe send a grandma like a postcard and go hey I heard you speak about this when I was in third grade <laughs> who knows what can happen I know it sounds a bit like science fiction now as I've said multiple times during our presentations that you've been watching but just might be true. Remember this, whatever you can think, dream, or imagine today might be great science tomorrow. Ooh, I'm liking how, oh, and you know what I really like about my ladder? I kind of mixed a green straw with a red and white straw. I'll show you in a minute. I'm waiting for the big reveal. All right, here we go. I might need to add another step. I don't want her spraining her ankle as she takes that last little step on the moon. All right, here we go. Oh, I think you're gonna love it. But you probably could design an even, oh, did somebody say instead of making a, a ladder, just make a slide? <laughs> I love that, make a slide. I'll have to do that next time. All right, so here's my ladder. What do you think? Not bad. All right, so I've got my, I've got my flap over there. I've got my seat belts. It is time now all my good astronauts to do the official drop. And I'm actually, if you decide to stand on a chair and try this, just make sure it's not one of those rolly ones. Yeah, you could fall. But I'm gonna stand up here. Are you guys ready? And I'm gonna drop it on this table. It's gonna go out of sight and you guys are all gonna count me down. All right, I'm making room. Don't want anything on my good landing site. Here we go. Are you helping me count down? I sure hope you are. All right, start at five. Here we go in five, four, three, two, one, drop. Whoa! Touchdown, we are on the moon. Now, are you ready to try? Have you tried this out at all? Find a place to drop your lunar lander. Stand on a chair or stool, but please be safe and careful. Then have your teacher or grown up or your entire class count down. Five, four, three, two, one, drop. 
Then make sure your lunar lander survived the lunar descent. And remember to get your teacher or your grown-up to take a picture of what you've designed, send it back to the theater at this email address, and because we want to see what you created. We might even need to send it to NASA or SpaceX or Blue Origin or Aerojet Rocketdyne. They may need to know who's out there already conceiving of ways that we will go to the moon and beyond. Two, one. Woohoo! This tested out pretty well. If you see anything a little bit wobbly, just go ahead and put more tape on it. All right, now let's try this design. This is complete with air resistance and friction along with my retro propulsion. The astronauts can come down their ladder and take the first steps of the Artemis generation. Here we go, five, four, three, two, one. Woohoo! Now, did you see what happened? Because I didn't plan for the retro rockets until after I had designed everything else. These don't actually touch the ground. So maybe I'm fine without it because I had a very successful descent onto the moon without them. Let's try it again. Take a look. Five, four, three, two, one. So maybe you need them. Maybe you don't up to you and your design. You know what else I've seen people do? I've seen people use cotton balls as their way to think about some shock absorption and as a way, because remember, we don't want to land too hard because we don't want to hurt our most precious resource, our astronauts. So as you think about shock absorption, air resistance and friction, how do we like make sure if we have any retro rockets underneath here? I bet if I wanted this to match up, say I really am committed to making this happen, hmm, all I would have to do is go, you know what, let me just cut a little bit of this cup off. Let's see if that'll work. And maybe you're out there going, wow, there's so many steps. I've, I was hoping it would be easier. Guys, nothing worthwhile is going to be super easy. You're gonna to have to work at it. And I think you'll have fun. If you're doing something you love to do, oh, look at there, that's about perfect. So all I had to do was just take a, make a little adjustment to the size of my retro rockets and we're off to the races. So whatever you can conceive and it doesn't work out, you just come back and you think about, hmm, how might I, redesign this. I gotta put a little more tape there. And I lost a seat belt. You know what just telling me I really need to tape that seat belt down. Yeah. I think I'll do that just now. Again, always be willing to learn something. All right. Get this taped in such a way. And then we're gonna test it. All right. Let's see here. Oh, I lost an astronaut. You get under that seatbelt, you. All right, here we go. <gasps> here we go in five, four, three, two, one. All right. It's a little lopsided, hmm. which means I just get to keep working on it. And maybe at the end of our time, you're realizing I still have so much work to do on it. Do you have any idea how much I would love to be with you in person, doing this with you, watching you and counting you down and seeing your amazing progress in your designs? Maybe it didn't go well the first time. Maybe your astronauts hopped out and flew out. Yikes. But I'm hoping that you continued to design and redesign until you had Mission success. Mission success is when it lands upright without bouncing your astronauts out. I'm still not convinced I need these retro rockets. In fact, I don't think I do. I rather like it just like this. 
but it's all up to you. Please remember to take pictures, send them to the theater. They'll send it on to me and we will feature you as our superstars of the Artemis generation on all our social platforms. Let your mind revolve around this thought. The universe is always expanding. Let your mind do the same. And that's the view from Janet's planet. <gasps> Thank you.